video for harness desensitisation. You can use it for whatever equipment you decide to use for your dog um, when you walk them. So um, some dogs need a little bit of help with feeling more comfortable with their collars or their harnesses or their leads. Um, some dogs when you pick them up they actually shy away or they will move away from you when you're trying to put it on them um, or they just don't, they seem a bit concerned when you approach them with it. So what you actually want the dog to do is when you pick up their harness or their collar or their lead is they come to you and they're happy about it and they are willing to have it put on throughout the whole time you're trying to put it on. Um, the reason for that is if, they, uh, if they're not comfortable having it on then that stress and that anxiety or that worry every single time you put it on before a walk can contribute to existing stress and anxieties out on a walk and potentially make behavioural problems worse or it can actually cause them. So if you have a puppy who's completely fine with things at the moment or a dog who's okay with everything and then each time before a walk you're putting on a harness or a collar or a lead that actually causes the dog concern, you can create issues for your dog outside. So what we want to do is to make sure the dog is completely comfortable wearing whatever it is you choose uh, to walk them in and that they enjoy having it put on and it's their choice. So it's really, really important that you give your dog a voice and a choice and that you don't um, force things on them. So there's a lot of good videos out there online that you can use for harness desensitising, um, but I just wanted to show you how we do it. So the response you get from your dog should be, when you pick it up, they should be happy, they should be quite loose, quite wiggly, um, excited that the harness means that they're going to be going out, and um, they should be coming towards you. If you've got to go towards them, there's a problem, they're not happy with something. And it can be you leaning over them, it can be the, the unwanted kind of approach with something, or it could be the feeling of the equipment itself. So we do prefer to use harnesses uh, as opposed to walking on collar and lead or on head collars, say, unless absolutely necessary. Um, however, we do desensitise to everything the dogs wear, regardless of what it is. The harnesses we prefer to use are wide front harnesses. So they come across the front and then down the middle and then round, so it just looks like a Y. Now, some harnesses come across the front, across here, and it actually can restrict movement on the front so their shoulders can't extend fully, and it changes their gait, and it can also contribute to lunging and pulling on the lead. So we always prefer to use Y front harnesses. Perfect fit harnesses are one of our favorite harnesses that we use, and that's what I'm gonna show you today uh, with both in here. So I'm going to show you his. Um, they're very, very good. They're so tough. The one that I'll be using today, he's had for about six years and it goes in the wash every three days. It's really, really um, hard wearing, but it's good. It still has maintained its shape. It still sits where it should and it doesn't rub anywhere, which is really, really important. So you need to check your equipment regularly to make sure that it's not causing discomfort to your dog, even if it is a well-fitted harness. You need to make sure that they are comfortable in it. So I've got my treats here as well in a little tub. Um, you want to cut your treats up really, really small when you're doing um, any kind of desensitising work. You don't need to have great big hunks of food. So um, we get 20 pieces out of a cocktail sausage. We cut them lengthways and then all the way along five times. Um, and I just kind of tear treats up really, really little. So I can get lots of repetitions and lots of rewards in without, the, um, without making the dog fat or full. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is pick up the harness and... The response that I want, which I should get, is he's happy. He should jump off the sofa, start wiggling around, stamping about a bit and getting excited. That's the response that I'm looking for. If I don't get that, then there's something wrong. There's something that the dog isn't comfortable with. So if you're not getting that response when you pick up the dog's harness, then you need to start before this stage of just picking it up, placing it on the floor and then doing some treats around it or picking it up, placing it down, and then feeding the dog their meal, and then putting it away again. So you need to start there, so that you can start to create a positive association with the harness, with the harness coming out, and it doesn't mean it's going on you. Um, the next stage of it is then what I'm gonna show you now. So I'm gonna be using a treat, not to lure him towards the harness in any way, but to reward him when he chooses to do so. So I'm not gonna be saying, oh, what's this, what's this, and trying to get him to come through or putting his head near it. I'm just going to reward him when he does go near it. So there's a very, very big difference there. I don't want to be tricking him into anything. I want him to be very aware of what we're doing and just be rewarded for it. And if he chooses to walk away or he's done, then he's done. That's fine. We can stop today. And I do 
very, very strongly suggest that if your dog is not comfortable with the harness or with the collar or lead and as you're working on it, you do not walk them during this time because it will put back your progress, it will put back the trust that, that you're trying to build in the dog with you and the equipment and they do not need to go out every single day. You can do nasal stimulation instead and you can work through training and working on desensitising instead during that time. So don't worry if you need to take a break from walks whilst you work on this. So the harness itself is over there, it's behind the camera, so I'm going to get up and walk over there and then I'll talk you through what I'm going to do from there. So he's got up and he's wiggling around. So you see the happy kind of fluid body. That's what you're looking for. I know there's treats in there too, isn't there? So you want him to be happy about seeing the harness itself. So lots of wiggling, kind of moving around. Now Bosa likes to strut about when he gets excited. So that's fine. That's not moving away from the harness. That's just being happy. So as you can see, he's quite happy being nearish it. And we've got a wiggle. That's what we're looking for. So this is the perfect fit harness for, for you. So as I say, he's had this for about six years. Um, what I'm going to be doing is sitting on my bum on the floor. Now the reason for that is I don't want to be leaning over him if I'm on the sofa and I don't want to be standing up and leaning over him either. Hello, thank you so much for the look. So what I'm going to do is have some treats and I'm just going to place them on the harness to begin with. Just to show you. So he's got some sausage bits in here. He's got some tripe bits and I think there's some sweet potato treats too. I'm not going to try and lure him towards the harness itself at all. I'll place it on the floor and then I'm just going to pop some treats around it. This is the first level, so you need to make sure your dog is wiggling, your dog is happy to come towards the harness and that it's not a concern for them. Good boy. What I'm then going to do is throw a treat away so he goes away from the harness so that when I pick it up and have a treat near it, he comes and eats the treat there. So he's moved away, so I've given him the option to actually get away from the harness before picking it up. So he's not right next to it. Sometimes when you pick it up, when they're right next to it, it almost can feel a bit like a trap. So I don't want him to feel that way. So just pick up a couple more. Throw a treat away. And I'm going to hold this up. I've got a treat through the, the headpiece here. So he can take that. Now notice I'm not moving the harness. I'm just rewarding him for having his head near it. I'm not moving the harness towards him. What I'm doing is moving the tree. Look, he dropped it. Good boy. Well done. So I take it away. So Boson has a very big skull, as you may be able to see. This is quite a small hole because his neck is quite little. So he has to push a little bit harder than your dog may have to in order to get it on. So he's used to it and that's okay. Good boy. Well done. So it may mean that the clips are more so here. There is the beauty of perfect fit harness is that you can actually unclip and then clip around the dog. So for some dogs that's actually better for them. They prefer that. But you need to make sure that they're happy standing, good boy, standing near you whilst you're doing it. So that they're happy stood here whilst you're rewarding. And it's not that you're coming towards them doing this. If they're backing away and you're coming towards them, then they're not comfortable. I say sit on your bum. If you sit on your bum, you can't lean towards them. Right here we go. So as you can see, I've got pushed quite hard with him because his head is massive, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> Good boy. So you see, we've still got wiggles. We're still happy and we're still wiggling, aren't we? Yeah? And just reward him for having it on round this part. And to get them off, I always unclip to get them off because it's just quick and easy. See that bit? I'm going to see. Oh no. I was going to see if he'd walk away, but he won't because he's quite happy about having it put on. If he goes to walk away at any time, then you take it away. 
then you take the harness away. So as soon as they go to walk away, you stop. One time that. completely comfortable and he stays there whilst it gets clipped on. Well done, you can reward him for that. So now we've got this bit. This bit now needs doing up. For some dogs, you can reward them with this one, come through and then clip up. They're quite happy with that. For other dogs, it helps to put some treats on the floor to entertain them whilst you clip. So that their head end is down. Just do head end down. You can then clip up quite easily, like this. So it's kind of stress-free putting it on. You do need quite a few hands and you do need to have your treats. So don't worry if it's a bit fumbly to begin with. But always make sure, I know, always make sure that you're unclipping so that you can take it away from the dog. So that you're not pulling it off over their head to get it off and that it's not uncomfortable. Now Bose has worn harnesses for a long time. He's quite happy with pushing his own head through one but he probably wouldn't want me pulling it off over his head. That's a bit different. So as I come towards him like this, that's what I would want, is him to stand there and be comfortable and not be concerned that it's coming towards him. That's him clip one side. Just go and reward this bit. As you can see, he's quite robust harnesses. They're pretty strong. He's a very strong dog, um, but they are very, very good. And all of this bit is completely free. So see how his shoulder joint is completely free here. This can move and extend without um, restriction anywhere. When you get the harnesses which come across the front here, they actually push along this part here when he pulls, which is not good. It can actually encourage pulling and lunging. Good boy. Let's just take this off. Back to one. Good boy. You see I'm getting a lot of lip licking. A lot of that is because the food is here. So that can actually be a low level signal that it's a bit much and that it's, it's too stressful. But the fact that he's coming back over each time he's happy to stand here says to me he's not that bothered. Take your dog, you know your dog well. So if you're getting lots of lip licking, lots of yawning, they're probably not as comfortable as you may think they are. Cool. See if we can get your head through again. Good boy. Well done. Good boy. Push. I'm a big girl. Good boy. Well done. And then you should be able to do it up all in one go once you've actually built to this stage. Like I say, if your dog's not comfortable and they don't want it on, you don't have to have it on. You don't have to go out. You can build up to it and build up over a few days even not necessary to throw it on them and take them out. So have a go with your dog and see how they do. Right, you go be free. <laughs> Got one on your tongue. Good boy. So that's harness desensitising. I'll do another one um, shortly for leads and for collars, but it's all about having your treats and taking it slow. Making sure the dog can leave if they want to, which is why we throw the treats away. So if they want to leave, they can. It's really, really important that you respect that. So you sit on your bum so that you're not following them, you're not leaning over them, and you're not trying to push it towards them. They've got to come to you and be stood here the whole time. 